So in this session, uh, we s still will not uh, state explicitly what the church Turing thesis is. And we're still alluding to it, uh, somewhat frustratingly, but uh, not, not in this session. Um, but we're leading up to it, and we're giving, giving now a, histor a famous historical example of where, due to the lack of that explicit uh, formal definition of what uh, an algorithm is, led, led to a famous misconception on the part of Hilbert, who, uh, in his tenth problem, assumed that an algorithm would, you know, must, must exist, and it was just a question of finding it. It did not occur to him that uh, there might not be such an algorithm, and and and, th and it turned out that's that that's what happened. Uh, in fact, I had to wait till uh, I could read it out. Nineteen seventy, I think, yeah, fairly, fairly recent. Um, uh, in nine, you know, this is from the text, so uh, probably stealing a bit from a future session. In nineteen seventy, Yuri Matiyasevich. Matiya, Matiya, I can't even pronounce it. Uh, which, so, Serb, maybe Serbian? Anyway. Uh, building on work of Martin Davis. Now, the book I just showed you in the previous session is uh, by Davis. Uh, Martin Davis, uh, com Computability and Unsolvability. So, the same Davis. So, building on work of... Uh, Martin Davis, Hilary Putnam, and Julia Robinson. That's a woman, one of the one of the rare women uh, in uh, in this whole area. So uh, she would probably have a higher. Z if you're a statistician, if you know statistics, she would have a higher Z score as a female than these other guys probably. Uh, anyway, it showed uh, that no algorithm exists for testing whether a polynomial has integral roots. Well, there I'm throwing away uh, what <laughs> the, the problem actually is. Okay? In chapter 4, next, the next chapter, we develop the techniques that form the basis for proving that this and other problems are algorithm, algorithm, algorithmically unsolvable. Unsolvable. Okay. Anyway, so uh, what is the tenth problem? Uh, well, you need to know a bit about polynomials. It's, it's a problem about polynomials. So what's a polynomial? So poly, you know, many, nomial terms, so many terms. Now, here's, here's an example of a polynomial, okay? So here's one term, here's another one, another one, another one. And a polynomial is just a sum of terms. And what's a term? A term is usually a product of variables, you know, x, y, and z are variables. Okay, x and y, so a product of variables uh, to various powers, uh, and usually on the left of each term is some coefficient, some constant. Right? In this case, they're integer constants, but you could have you know, other kinds of constants, real numbers, complex numbers, whatever. They're, they're all polyn you know, polynomials. Okay. Now the question is, uh, let this. You let this polynomial be the left-hand side of an equation, and on the right-hand side you just have zero. Right? So you equate the polynomial to zero, so all this equals zero, and uh, the solution, you know, in, in this case the values of x, y, and z, that would be your solution, uh, those, that set of values, the, you know, the numbers you give to x and to y and to z, that set, is called a root, R-O-O-T. Okay. And a, so a root then is the solution, or a solution, to the polynomial equation. Right? Now, uh, so you're given, say you're given a, a polynomial, or polynomial equation. And the question then is, uh, the root of that equation. Could, is there one root, and there may be, you know, maybe several roots, maybe a lot of roots to a given you know, one equation. Um, is it possible one of those roots, at least one, has uh, 
a solution that is integral. In other words, the variables in your polynomial uh, have integer values. And if you plug in, now for example, for this polynomial here, uh, the, the root of, or a root of this equation does have integral, you know, integer values. Uh, well, I haven't checked it. So x is 5, y is 3, and z, z is 0. If I can. So if z is 0, this whole term drops out, so you're just left with, left with this. Now, is that, is that 0? Let me just check quickly. Uh, y squared, so it's 9 times 5, 45, 3 45. So what's that, 135? 135, 130, 135 minus x cubed, that's 125, 135, so that's 10 left over minus 10 is 0. Yes. Okay. So these, this, this is a root, you know, this, this set of values, x is 5, y is 3, and z is 0. And it's, a, it's an inter, integral root, meaning, meaning uh, the solution of these, you know, the variables here. Um, the, the integers, and when you plug in those values, the integer values, into the polynomial equation, so this is the left-hand side, equals zero, uh, you know, well, when you plug in those values to the left-hand side, you get zero. So, so that's the root. And, and Hilbert's uh, question was, find an algorithm, um, you know, his tenth problem, uh, you know, find find an algorithm that would show that a particular polynomial equation uh, has an at least one integral solution. Now you may ask, well, why did Hilbert put that in his list? Well, yeah, why, what's so significant about this? Well, I can't answer that. Um, I don't know. I'm not. You know, <laughs> maybe some field mathematician with a lot of uh, experience in the history of the. Hilbert problems might be able to answer that. But anyway, Hilbert thought it was significant, uh, a solution to this problem would, is significant to uh, the future development of pure mathematics. So he decided uh, it was worthy to be one of his problems. So he put it in as the 10th the problem. Right? So, okay, now we know, we now know what, uh, so here, here's the statement here. So Hilbert's 10th problem, it was to devise, you know, create an algorithm that tests whether a polynomial or polynomial equation has an integral root. Right? So find, find an algorithm that can answer yes or no whether a particular uh, polynomial that you're given has an integral integral root, yeah, at least one. Okay? Now, uh, now he didn't use the term algorithm. Uh, this is what he did. Now, this is a quote from Hilbert. So for him, um, Instead of the word algorithm, he's, he's using, uh, you know, instead of using an algorithm, you're using, quote, a process according to which it can be determined by a finite number of operations. Well, that's the intuitive notion of what an algorithm is, you know, a step-by-step -step, um, method of solving a problem. Right? So a finite, finite number of operations. Now, uh, now, he used this term, uh, divine, well, he just, according to Sipsa, Hilbert simply assumed there was such an algorithm. You just had to find it, right? And it didn't, as I was saying earlier, it did not occur to uh, Hilbert that there was no such algorithm. Right? In fact, it took to, you know, 1970, I was saying earlier, to show that, um, no such algorithm exists, right? which is uh, was foreign to him. <laughs> yeah, so, so no, we now we now know uh, no algorithm exists for this task. Right? So so the that problem is algorithmically unsolvable. You cannot find it's impossible to find an algorithm that can solve that problem and unsolvable in the sense you can mathematically show that it is unsolvable, which uh, personally I'm always you know, fascinated by that concept, that you can actually prove that something cannot be proved uh, in, in this context. Yeah, so, so yeah, it, and uh, Sips is saying, yeah, it had been, well, impossible, virtually impossible 
for the mathematicians of that era to come up with that notion because they, you know, they had no idea. They didn't have a firm, uh, rigorous idea of what an algorithm was. They had to wait until 1936. Uh, uh, here, yeah. So when the papers of um, Church and Turing came out that same year, and that's why uh, this formal definition of what a, an algorithm is um, came out that year, 36. And so they put the two names together because they thought of it pretty much the same time, same year at least. So it's called the Church-Turing thesis. And it's a precise definition of what an algorithm is. And we still haven't uh, specified, haven't told you yet what it is. We have to wait till next board. But uh, it's coming. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, uh, so Church used his uh, Lambda calculus approach to modeling computation as, uh, as a means, now I'm giving you a hint, as a means to define what an algorithm is. And Church used his Turing machine notion of uh, a model of computation to define what a an algorithm is. And so you, you put the two together, and you get the so-called uh, Church-Turing thesis, uh, which you use to specify in uh, you know, rigorously in detail what an algorithm is. Okay, and then using that, using that definition, then you can go further and start proving that uh, certain problems have no algorithms that can solve them. They are unsolvable, uh, algorithmically, in, in that sense. Okay? So that's, that's, what's, that's what's coming. Uh, so um, this thesis, you know, this church uh, Turing thesis, that, that was necessary uh, to, to provide uh, you know, the definition of an algorithm which in turn, once you had that definition, then you could, not that's the right word, but resolve, in other words, give an answer to uh, Turing's tenth problem. And it's, it was not a yes or no answer. Uh, hold on. No, it, it, was not, it was not an answer in the form of, here's the algorithm. Right? It, it was unexpected. Uh, if Hilbert had been, if someone in a time machine had gone back to Hilbert's time and said, look, here's, uh, here's the answer to your tenth problem, uh, that there is no answer. It's unsolvable. Uh, that probably would have shocked him profoundly. Um, in fact, uh, now uh, yeah, there's a whole industry of theorists working on problems that, you know, they're trying to show things, certain problems can be solved or can't be solved, or can be computed or cannot be computed, and so on. It's a fascinating area. And uh, I'll go up to PhD one level now, I've decided. I, I will teach a fairly advanced course, uh, PhD one level, on computability. I've shown you the textbook several times in uh, previous sessions. Okay, so uh, the, the answer, so to speak, to Hilbert's tenth problem is that the problem is algorithmically unsolvable. And uh, I'll leave you there.